fighting This week I did it my way I made lots of juice And now I feel a boost Baby say oh It's the way I make my juice Pressing fruits and roots This week I did it my way Baby say oh Now let's have some fun There is nothing greater Than Friday's act of nature Ow 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 What's up, my ju- 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 juice lovers? Bow, bow, bow. Welcome to Good Nature Radio. This is your host, Charlie Wetlaufer, joined by the two top juice business consultants in the entire world and also the universe. I'm pretty sure. Chef Ari Sexner, <laughs> author of The Juicing Companion. Yes, the guy that literally wrote the book on how to create your own unique juice recipes. It's on the call today, along with Olivia Esquivel, the founder and operator of Southern Press Juicery, the award-winning juice, smoothie, and acai bowl shop. Welcome to Good Nature Radio, the weekly Friday podcast where the juicing industry comes to get help starting and growing a juice business. Good Nature was founded in 1976 by my dad, Dale Wetlaufer, when he invented the commercial cold press juicer. What? All right. Um, interested in learning about our complete turnkey packages for starting a juice business? Schedule a 30 minute call with the Dream Team. It's like your own private podcast. You can do that at goodnature.com slash radio. There's a quick little form there. Uh, there's also the School of Juice. If you want one of the excellent courses done by the group, you can do it at learn.goodnature.com. Of course, join in on the discussion of the Good Nature Juicing Facebook group. Up to almost 5,000 members. Just go into Facebook and search Good Nature Juicing. And shop in bulk at the Good Nature Marketplace. Goodnature.com. All right. Today we have a really important up episode on COGS. Cost of goods sold. C-O-G-S. That's right. The most important thing you need to know if you're about to launch a juice business. Why do you need to know it? Because you need to know if... You're actually making any money. If you don't know your cogs, you don't know if you're making any money. Why would you run a business if you didn't know if you're making any money? Well, you'd be surprised. A lot of people do. So you'd be surprised. Today we're going <laughs> to try to straighten you out. If you don't know your numbers, hopefully by the end of this podcast you will. Or at least you'll know how. Um, so we're going to go over cost of goods, why it's important. We're going to look at an example of a spreadsheet Ari makes for his clients when he creates recipes for them. And how they use it to calculate cost of goods pretty much every time they go to order or every month or whatever. And then, um, uh, yeah, and we're going to, Olivia's going to talk about how she uses COGS in her business. So let's get into it. Yeah. First, let's talk about um, why it's important to know your cost of goods sold. Olivia, let's start like you've been working with a lot of clients lately. Mm. Um, how often do you think they know their numbers, don't know the numbers? And what do you tell them about like the importance of knowing their numbers? Um, I will be honest with you. Um, I really thought that most people would know their numbers or at least have an idea Um, I know that our numbers change a lot because every time, every single day that it's like every single day that prices come out, something changes, right? It's not like your apples are the same price every single day, but we should all have an awareness of where we sit in our numbers. And hopefully if you're going out to the grocery store and you're buying, hopefully you won't be doing that long. You'll work with Chef Ari to find purveyors. Like that's not the ultimate goal, right? The ultimate goal is to be with a purveyor, several purveyors that bring things with you. The beautiful thing about having a purveyor is they tell you as prices are changing um, and they sort of give you a heads up. So that's really like the ultimate, like best friend tip is like, Hey, Olivia, I just heard strawberries going to be going up in the next two or three weeks. Do you want to order and maybe freeze some, or do you want to hold on that? Do you want to look at some recipes? That's great. But to answer your question, Charlie, I find that the vast majority of the people that I talk to in the juice industry do not know their numbers at all. Like there's always this really Hmm. awkward, like, Hey, well, how's your food costs looking? Do you know your numbers? And they're like, 
uh, well, and then there's this really awkward pause and I have to jump in and I'm like, okay, it's okay. You, you don't have to be embarrassed. You can just tell me you don't know. <laughs> we can figure yeah. them out. Um, but yeah, most people don't know their numbers. Like they don't even, they got no clue. Um, and you'll see that sometimes in the good nature Facebook group where, um, if you're not in that group, you need to be, but people will say like, Hey, what should I charge for celery juice? And right. while I think it's good to know like what the market can bear and what the trends are really like leaning towards, it really doesn't matter what Olivia charges for celery juice. What matters is what Ari is buying celery at. Um, and so that's the most important thing. So if you don't know your numbers, you need to know your numbers. And, and there's been a lot of talk um, about how to get those. So when Chef or I ask you, like, what is your food cost? We're not asking actually for your cost of goods sold. We're asking just the food that went in the bottle. What does that cost? Yes, we know the plastic or glass bottle costs something. We know the cap costs something. We know the labor and the label costs something. But we're not asking that. Like, we will down the road. But right now, we just want to talk about food cost. And that's the number one thing I see is either one, they don't know what they're doing or two, they're calculating everything into their food cost. Um, so cue Chef Ari about yeah. how to fix that for everybody. So, I mean, it, well, it's one of those things where you, you run into a restaurant, you have to know so many different aspects, you know, and certain things I feel people don't understand completely and they just kind of go into it blind. This is one of those things where it's great to understand it, you know, and we're here to help you out, you know, explain it as much as possible so you're comfortable with doing it. Uh, overall, I mean, and also Charlie and Olivia, you guys got to cut me off if I'm kind of rambling and, and going through a little far because I kind of go on tangents and I'm just like, tell me we'll to shut stop up. stop you when you get, when I hear you yeah. say log four times, I'm going to be like, <laughs> yeah, I'll try <laughs> we're losing about viewers. Logs, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So food cost is different for every kind of operation. Okay. You you have the beauty. I used to work in a casino, which had all different kinds of operations, which was great to see how every operation had different food costs. You know, there's stuff like banquets or like an Italian restaurant. Their Their product is fairly cheap. Okay. So they might have a 15% food cost which means what they're selling that product for, that selling price, only about 15% of that cost is actually the food that it takes to make that product. And then you have the other end where it's like maybe a steakhouse or even a buffet. They might even be up to like 50, 55% food cost. So it's really important to think about your operation, what food costs you should be in. So juice bars, uh, kind of, healthy casual restaurants they usually always try to stick between a 20 and 30 percent food cost and what that means is say you sell a bottle of juice ten dollars it should have two to do two to three dollars worth of produce per bottle of juice okay so i that's essentially what the cost of goods should be yeah um, so when you're developing recipes, how early are you thinking about cost of goods? Like you're just experimenting and then later being like, okay, now I've got to make this profitable. Or are you like right from the beginning thinking about that? My process when I, when I create recipes, that's, I don't even think about food cost, you know, and it's might be a little surprising, but I don't want that to affect the, the creative nature of coming up with new recipes, you know, and that's kind of something that I bring in later on. So when I create recipes, I think of everything else besides that, you know, what kind of health benefits, what kind of color juice I'm, I'm trying to have. And then after I have my recipes ready to go, that's where I figure out the food cost because you could take a recipe and do some minor tweaks and it could be at 40% food cost and slightly adjust it and bring it in between 20 and 30%. You know, I'm my main goal is not to make the profit before I create the recipe, essentially. And then you're like, oh, I guess I got to take these white truffles out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got to take imported... out these gold leaf flakes. No, or like, like he just vanilla beans. <laughs> no, he just comes to Olivia's shop and he's like, Olivia, why are you putting in ten pounds of parsley in one green juice? Yeah, you 
you know, yeah. you could just pull that back to <laughs> two pounds. And I'm like, <gasps> yeah. yeah, with juice, it's actually really easy because you have a lot of ingredients that are very low yielding, you know, and that are just kind of there for the nutrient purposes, you know, and you could do slight adjustments to that. And they're typically expensive. So like parsley or kind of herbs, you could just lower that slightly, make sure the flavor is still correct and be within food costs without any issues. Um, so I've got, you're nice enough to show us an example of a food cost calculator, right? This food cost or total cost of goods? This, this food is cost, right? food cost food. specific. Yeah, okay. yeah. So going over the columns here, you have uh, the ingredients. Yep. Then you have how many bottles you're making, right? Is that what this is? Correct. You're making 10, 16 ounce servings. Um, and then this is uh the total so if i change this to five yeah that changed okay so now it's showing you total ounces of these ingredients that you need to make yeah. 10 bottles of that and what's what's important about this is that is raw weight okay right. this is what Be you're ordering correct yeah because okay. this once you figure out these numbers it's not only going to help you with uh putting together an order list like you mentioned but for production as well Right, because because you're not ordering oranges that are peeled, you're ordering oranges that still have the peel on them. So that's Correct. different. The weight that you put in the actual machine is different than the weight you order. So that's important to remember, yeah. right, Olivia? Like when you order bananas and pull the peel right. off. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right, and then you have the ounces converted to pounds because that's how you order it, right? You order by the pound. Uh -huh. And if you do a larger production, you're going to be weighing by the pounds. So. It's right. easier to, when you're doing your testing, always keep it in the same format. So if I'm doing my initial testing, I'm recording the weights, be sure to keep everything in ounces or everything in pounds. Right. Okay. Then current price per pound, that's down here. So you would go to your order list from your supplier, right? Mm -hmm. And you'd plug in the updated pricing before you place the order. So the prices are going to change. So you might say lemon is uh what 450 a pound now cayenne spice is um what's a realistic price per pound for that uh probably be like 25 20 bucks all right how about maple syrup on come, on, Ari. <laughs> come on quickly. <laughs> i'm just kidding i would say probably uh 12 bucks and then filtered water Free. I mean, that's if yeah, you get that free. Much free. Uh -huh. Can, all right. So, um, is is four fifty a good number for lemons? I just made that up. I have no idea. Uh, probably about two bucks. Oh yeah. Wow. Look at that. Okay. So, so now with these calculations, with those prices, you're saying it's going to cost me seventeen dollars and seventy four cents for every ten bottles I make. Mm -hmm. So that price per bottle is $1.77. Correct. And, and if the desired food cost is 25%, then you have the formula here saying the sale price per bottle should be $7.10. There you go. That's how you do that. So that's where you're targeting a 25% food cost. You should sell the bottle for $7.10. Um, and you could take it a step further and be like... uh packaging cost could be like the bottles and the labels and stuff. Let's say like a dollar 25. And then you could say, um, total labor for one hour. Be, you could do your labor. Yeah. Too. Well, I, I guess we could have a debate on whether you include labor. Yeah, so I mean, the none of that has so. to do with your food cost, but you right. just, you know what your cost is all in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so, all right, so we could say labor time, uh, or labor cost, we could say, um, uh, yeah, it's kind of hard though, because it depends on how many bottles I'm right. making and stuff, but let's not count labor for this. Let's just do uh, packaging cost. So then your, uh, total cogs would be 
dollar seventy seven plus one twenty five. There you go. So total cost is three hundred two. Uh, gross profit equals sale price per bottle minus cost of goods. There you go. So that's your four dollars uh, seven cents per bottle profit. Um, so, and then of course, if your packaging was only a dollar, then that profit would go up as you would expect, or let's say you target a higher food cost, let's say you're okay with 30%, then your profit will go down and there you go. So that's the difference between like, um, food cost and actual cost yeah. of goods sold. And so first of all, this is not a, this is close to an actual recipe, but it's not actually real numbers says, you know, it's right. not just in yeah. case you're wondering putting point one <laughs> ounces of cayenne in a bottle be <laughs> extremely spicy, but this is just an example. And, yeah. and the reason why I do it in this format, I I've, I've, I've created a spreadsheet for a long time and reworked it and reworked it a lot of times. And really, it was really overcomplicated initially. You know, I overthought everything. I thought about, you know, I got to get yield testing for lemons. I got to do a yield test for for kale, for celery, and get all these individual yield testing. But then you really think about it. It's when you juice everything together, that's going to give you a specific yield. You know, if you're getting 50% right. yield on, on, on kale and 50% on lemons and you juice them together and you end up with 60% yield, those individual yields are useless. So you got to think of it as an entire juice, juice together, which is a way you're going to be making it. That's going to give you the actual yield. Okay. For the recipe. And yeah. I also put in this format because it's got the market list on the bottom side. Mm -hmm. You add your recipes to the same, same tab. Okay, so that the market list grows. That way, if you have lemon in five recipes, you don't need to input cost per mm. pound for the five recipes, you know, and you it literally just can yeah. just plug in the numbers once for everything. I see. So have you have a tab costed. that's like the price list, and then right. all yeah. the other recipes reference the price list. Right. Yeah, and they're Very all linked nice. up so you don't have to yeah. keep re entering the numbers. Right. Yeah, yeah, this is really so nice. So as mm -hmm. numbers start to change, you know, as apples start to go down, as you know, and, and I don't personally recommend that you change your prices a lot. I mean, I think I've said it on the pod before. I've done a total menu price change twice since I've been open in 2015. Now I'll change things here or there, a dollar or two, but in terms of like, oh, geez, like we're in a different world now. I need to change the prices of everything. That's rare. So you really want to make sure that you're thinking about, okay, what are my apples when they're the cheapest? And what are my apples when they're the most expensive? And decide mm. where you want to be. Um, for me, I like to be more, price myself more to the middle, to the higher end, because that's where I usually sit for my apple prices. Um, for most of the year, I'm not getting the cheapest apples in the world. So, um, you know, that's something that you can tweak like watermelon. That's something that I would definitely tweak. And then as the numbers start to rise and you start to think, God, I have to sell this bottle of juice for $15 in order to get it a, a healthy food cost. Then that's probably time to either adjust that recipe, go back to Chef Ari and get something more seasonal or a refresh, or just take it off your menu for a little bit. Um, or, you yeah, know, see if you um, need to t tweak it at all. But that is what should yeah. be determining your prices. Now, again, it is good yeah. to know what the market can bear. You shouldn't be selling a 15 bottle of juice if all your competitors are selling 11, 10, 9. Um, but, you know, you, you've, you've got to make sense for your business. You can't just throw out. Like I see a lot of people, they're like, well, you know, I spent $400 in groceries, so I'm just going to double everything. No, I mean, and not everything should have the same food cost. And not everything should have the same price. I feel really strongly yeah. about that just as a consumer. I do not like when I go into a juice bar or anywhere else and everything is the same price. That drives me nuts because not everything yeah. is the same value. It's like if you offer me filet mignon and ground chuck, well, shit, I'm going to go for filet mignon every time if it's, if it's each $10. So in my opinion, yeah. it overvalues the ground chuck and it undervalues the filet. So then you've got people that are just looking like, hey, I wonder which one of this is like, ah, 
apple, lemon, ginger. I can probably make that at home. I'm going to go for this one that has like 10 ingredients, which is likely your highest food cost juice. So then your ones with the better food costs are just staying on the shelf. So, you know, and not everybody can wants just a $10 juice. They're more inclined to buy more. If you've got a $6, a $7, a $10, an $11, then you can really make some some really good sort of value packages in your juice bar. But that's another thing that I see across the board is most people have just one price because they think it makes it easier when I, I actually don't think it makes it easier at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and like maybe in this example, we're looking at it says you just charge seven dollars and ten cents. You really think of this as like a minimum sale price per bottle. Mm-hmm. Like there's no reason just because the spreadsheet says so you have to charge right. seven dollars, like charge yeah. eight. But then if you go to order next time and the price of maple syrup has gone up to 50 bucks. Right. And now it's telling you, you have to charge $27. Now you've got to take that off your menu. Now, you know, you're like now, right. I'm not making money at $8 anymore, you know? Right. So, and by doing this consistently, you can pinpoint mm-hmm. what's changed. You know, you can mm-hmm. shop around different purveyors, right? Pineapples mm-hmm. are too expensive, you know, maybe do right. a Costco run and find something cheaper to get you through until the price drops again. So, right. And then I just want to make one point. I already mentioned something earlier about the yield percentage, like for a mixed recipe. So mm-hmm. when we measure yield, what we do is we take the weight of the starting ingredient and then we compare it to the weight of the juice that is left over at the end. So you're, it's like how much of the fruit are you extracting? So something like watermelon has a very high yield, like 85% or something. And something like greens have a pretty low yield at like 60% or, you know, maybe less. Um, And, but we did do studies with a client and you do actually get more juice when you mix your recipes as opposed to juicing everything separately. So what Ari says is exactly right, where you can't just like juice every individual ingredient and then calculate how much juice you're going to get when you make your recipe because it's, it's going to change. And also, even if you did calculate it all, even mixed, and you had all your numbers perfect, produce changes. Produce is, some is more ripe and gets more juice. Some is less ripe and gets less juice. Um, you know, like, good example, you probably had melons or pineapple. Some are kind of dry and some are really juicy. And so, like, you really can't just sort of calculate all this stuff you know you've just Mm got to sort of make the recipe and it's going to vary a little bit uh here and there but yeah and if you're consistent following uh, like a spreadsheet like that you'll actually see it like Mm -hmm. you'll put in 10 bottles you make the juice you might be up to like 11 bottles stuff going out of season will go down to like maybe nine bottles but Mm -hmm. it it's like gradual throughout the seasons so it's always important to See what you're making, but also what doesn't happen to you enough is tasting the juice every batch you make. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's really important to train the staff, but that's a side topic. That's next week's show. (laughs) That's a different log, guys. (laughs) And uh, we can't forget to mention Ari does a very detailed walkthrough of these cost calculators in his course, the, his masterclass course and you can use the code gn radio for a hundred dollars off and we also have the downloadable files as part of the course so if you want to actually download this and play with it um you just got to get the course and you'll have access to this and also like complete detailed walkthrough of Ari going sort of line by line explaining everything um and how you can use it in your business so definitely worth it if you guys want to check that out um, I just, I just have one thing to add just because I think Charlie, I told you I was doing this this week in my shop was I was playing with my numbers, you know, as the season changes and, um, got two of my purveyors to go against each other again on some big ticket items that I buy a lot. And I think I said in a previous episode that, um, I had them negotiating over my almonds and, mm-hmm. um, my main purveyor went out and found a far, an almond farmer for me. And save me $45,000 a year just on almonds. Well, I had yeah, them um, go at it again this past week. And um, I think I brought my, if I can remember my real numbers, I think I was paying one oh five a case. And they brought it down to 90 a case. And I order several cases a week. 
So then I went ahead and I said, okay, let's, let's look at um, two or three other items. Like, you know, actually my apples, um, I was like thinking really everybody, all my clients have been telling me how cheap they're getting their apples. So I called some <laughs> local apple places and local grocers and actually my purveyor, surprisingly enough, was cheaper than the local apples. But then I went one step further and I texted him today before I put in my order. And I was like, dude, why do I have like the prettiest apples ever? Like, right. can you find exactly. me some ugly apples? I don't need mm -hmm. grocery store apples. Like I, I know, I just, I know I've never told you that, but now that I think about it, like, why are my apples so beautiful? <laughs> and so now he's finding yeah. me ugly apples, but, um, and there'll be hopefully a lower price for that. But I want to encourage you, like, as you start to get purveyors that remember that they're your partners, like it, it shouldn't be a, a, a vicious thing of having them go against each other. But Hey, I, like I told him, Hey, so-and-so really wants my almond business. Like, I'm just letting you know, he really wants it. And they'll, they said to me, well, like, I need to know what his price is. I have to put in what his price is and then I can match it or then I can beat it or whatever. So I went and I asked the guy that really wanted my almonds, dude, how much are you going to sell me almonds for? And my first purveyor was able to retain that business for me. So this is really the time as sales are low that you need to be going in and negotiating and having them find things for you trends that are coming, like ask them, you know, to set up your order guide for you. That's a pain in the butt to set up your own order guide. Go to them and say, listen, based on my past orders, can you set up an order guide for me? And I would really like for you to start looking for, you know, in the future, are there any, you know, dull coupons that are coming in? Or are there any frozen coupons that are coming in that if I buy a case, I'll get $200 back or whatever. Those things actually exist and they can be pretty significant. Um, Another thing that like, I don't know if this is happening nationwide, but for some reason, eight ounce bottles, um, right now for me, plastic eight ounce bottles were really inexpensive. So I stocked up on like five cases, six cases, even though I don't normally carry, that's something I'll do for catering. Um, so just be looking for things like that as holiday season comes around. You can use those for dressings or, you know, just small catering um, gigs. So just make sure that they're really fighting for your business and and helping you bring that food cost down and then adjust it on your ingredient price. Good tip. Thanks. Everyone, Olivia's pro tip. Good day. <laughs> it's been a minute. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, hope everybody has fun and safe holiday season. And uh, see you guys next week. Happy holidays. Bye, Bye. So now I feel a boost Baby say oh It's the way I make my juice Pressing fruits and roots This week I did it my way Baby say oh Now let's have some fun There is nothing greater Than Fridays at Good Nature